once again Apsaras returned to the mountain and went to the place Aradia instructed him to go. Aradia came to him in the form of a man, and laying both hands lightly upon each side of Apsaras' head, he crowned him Proctor, saying he was to be the father of his people, their spiritual leader, holy seer, prophet, and absolute leader. Then Aradia left him and told him to wait there as he would send another messenger to deliver the priesthood of Akar to him. After Aradia had departed shortly thereafter, a divine spirit materialized before Apsaras. She said her name was Bela, twin sister of Beleasa, that she had been instructed by Aradia to deliver the priesthood of Akae to Apsaras, that this priesthood was to be given to all the worthy of the Hittion people. She said that Apsaras was to remain as the proctor until he left his people and went into AKA, that before he was to go to Aka, that he was to have his high priests to name a new proctor amongst themselves. She told him that this priesthood was to that of Caliph, that the Caliphs were the highest priesthood, that Caliph meant the blood of man, as the Caliphs were to devote their entire life to mankind. She said that proctor was a title, not a priesthood, but a title of Caliph, that caliphs were to be over nations of followers, and that they were to select the new proctor amongst themselves upon the death of each proctor, as the proctor was to serve for life. She said that in all the priesthoods, women as well as men were to hold the priesthoods, and that there was to be a holy council of caliphs consisting of six women as well as men were to hold the priesthoods, and that there was to be holy council of caliphs consisting of six women and six men that were to decide upon all the issues concerning the spreading of truth to all nations and to select a proctor amongst themselves of any high priest so worthy to become the new proctor after the death of the former proctor, that there were to be a total of 27 caliphs altogether, but that only twelve were to sit upon this holy council, that this twelve could select any of the twenty-seven to be the next proctor. She told him both men and women could become proctors, and that upon being crowned a proctor by the patriarch or matriarch supreme, that the new proctor was to take on a new name, which she or he would be known in AKA and upon earth as thereafter. She told him that Aradia would give him the lists of names the new proctor could be called, as the names had already been chosen beforehand. She told him he was not to change his name, and that proctors of the future could change their names to Apsaras if they chose. She said both men and women could use the same names, that the list of names were to be used by both sexes. She said that this was the priesthood of Akaa, and that no other religion should use this priesthood except unto Aka that the next priesthood below the caliphs were to be both the matriarchs, women, and the patriarchs, men, that they would be over all the missions and missionaries, and there was to be nine women and nine men only of this priesthood. Below the matriarchs and patriarchs were to be the archbishops, which were to be over the tribes as teachers. Next to the archbishops were to be the bishops, which were to be teachers over clans. Below the bishops were to be the Abda, which were to select a few priests and take them in the mountains and live in solitude and study the Hittian way. The Abdas were to be over the monks who lived in this solitude way that Abda was to be a priesthood for a select few of both women and men. Below the Abda were to be the Moskas who were to teach families that all of these so named were to be of the high priesthood. Next were the Oshmans who were to go amongst the sick and the poor and help them. She said even a greater and larger priesthood would be added on at a later time when the populace of the followers had grown to larger numbers. She told Apsaras that when he or anyone else so worthy to ordain anyone below their priesthood ordained someone, they were to lay both hands upon that person's head as Aradia had done to Apsaras and say these words naming their own name, their priesthood and title and saying, do hereby ordain thee, given that person so ordained by their full name, uh, whatever priesthood they are being ordained, in the name of Aradia by the divine spirits and the saints of Akka, Ahilam, that they were then to give the secret handshake and once again say Ahilam, that when laying their hands upon the person to be ordained that they were to use the secret oil. She said Ahilam meant many things and was the word Aradia had said each time he had created something, as it meant it is sealed, so be it, let it be. Greetings, go in peace, and this I agree. Bella told Apsaras that if he served fully the sacred oath he had taken and would not fall from grace, 
that he could become master and enter into Akaye when his mission was complete, that he would not die in the flesh but would go straight away into Aka. She told him that all proctors who served and did not fall from grace would go straight to AKA upon their deaths. She told him that only the proctor had the right and the authority to remove the priesthood from any of the Hittian followers, and that a person need not be present to receive the priesthood, but that an object, animal or other person could stand in and represent that person to receive the priesthood. She told him women were not to be called priestess, as priestess meant second, that no one was second, but that all were first. She told him the only way a proctor could remove a person's priesthood was by placing certain seals upon certain types of parchment and sheaves of leather with their name and revoking secret words and their priesthood was removed. That certain ways and certain kinds of seals could either remove their priesthood forever or for a little while or for a time until it was again restored. That this removal could not therefore be broken as the rites used in removing a priesthood would be recognized in AKA and would be binding that anyone from the age of 12 on up could hold the priesthood, and that at a later date a radio would tell some future proctor if they should change the age requirement and way the priesthood should be given or taken away. She told him that all males holding the ruling class priesthood, which became the grand priesthood, were to wear beards and keep their beards trimmed neatly and to not remove their beards, as it was a sign of serving a radia, that all the females of the ruling class were to let their hair grow long. She said that a certain class of high priests were to rule over the tribes and nations so that all would benefit from the blessings of the power for which Aradia had given all mankind. She said that all the priesthood was to wear certain colors of garments regarding their various priesthoods, but that Aradia would instruct Apsaras what these garments would be and their colors, and that it would be recorded in the Qr Beth. After Bella had told Apsaras many more secret things not recorded in the Qr Beth, Apsaras went down out of the mountains and went amongst his followers and ordained all of those worthy to hold the various priesthoods by the way and according to Bella's instructions. Shortly thereafter, Apsaras with half of his tribe went to ancient Italy, then called the land of the Lati. There Apsaras taught amongst the tribes of these people. Most of the Lati tribes were a cruel and crude people, and few of their number took up the Hittion way. Most set about to drive away Apsaras's people and bring harm against them. But all of those Lati people that did negative things towards Apsaras's people met with strange diasters, disappearance and death. The Lati then became afraid of Apsrara's band and stayed clear of them. After Apsaras had stayed amongst these people for some time, and had brought many of their people into the Hittion faith, he and his band then turned eastward once again. The Lattice that had taken up the faith later turned from the faith, started the Roman Empire and the Catholic Church, stealing from the priesthood and many of the rites of the Hittian faith and even killing future Hittions. The Lattice that remained with the faith traveled with Apsaras out of the land of Lati toward the east. On Apsaras's travels, he went into ancient Arabia, Persia, Europe, Russia, India, China, Japan, Siam, the Mediterranean islands, France, Spain, England, and Scandinavia. His priests set sail for ancient North and South America and the Pacific islands. The Hittians built villages in ancient Canaan, Syria, Armenia, Turkey, Persia, India, Tibet, China, Germany, England, and Italy. They formed their own armies called the Titans, which later became a priesthood. They set up their own forms of government, and the Hittian Empire at one time grew to over six million followers worldwide. The Hittians had the finest villages and buildings ever built. Their people owned gold, silver and precious jewels, silk garments and heads of stock in great numbers, fleets of ships and were welcomed guests of rulers in many countries. No history was ever openly kept of the Hittians, and the Hittians told all their people not to let future historians know about them, thus no history was known about them until very modern times. By 1 BC there were only about 10,000 Hittians worldwide, and all their numbers were completely secret, as they had become a completely secret underground religion. 
Many of your ancient Egyptian, Hindu, Gypsy, Witchcraft and Tibetan religions got their religions based on the Hittian teachings and most of these religions sprung from the Hittians and in fact many of the Hittians after Apsaras's time started their own religions in their various countries from the Hittian religion. Time changed a lot for the Hittian religion and its followers, but the original teachings remain today, held on by die-hard Hittians who managed to keep the religion alive for thousands of years, yet secretive.